What's up guys, Flippin' Steve here in the 302. Just finished up my second physical therapy appointment. The foot's feeling pretty good, it's feeling stretched out. I have at least a month to go in physical therapy. You guys really don't care about that. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about repacks and repackers and how I think that they affect the hobby, the good and the bad, and this is just my opinion on it. I don't participate in repacks, but I am a buyer and seller of cards, so I am somewhat affected by repackers. Also gonna show you guys some mail day pickups. Charles Barkley Tops Chrome NBA All-Star Refractor. You guys saw the Hakeem Olajuwon in my last video. One in 300 packs. I think these inserts look awesome. We're gonna hang out with the crazy one. It's a beautiful day. Who's that? Who's that over there? Who's that? I'm home, I'm coming to get you. What exactly is a repack? I guess for lack of a better term, you could kind of say a repack is like a grab bag. <laughs> However, in this case, your bag has a chance to have something really good in it or something not so hot in it. He gonna shit when he realizes it's shit. So it's sort of like a chance, sort of like gambling. What you would do is you would pay set amount for a repack you would get your pack randomly drawn, and you would hope that it would have a chase card in it. But a majority of the packs are going to have cards in them that are not even necessarily worth the value of what you're paying for the repack. You have a chance of getting something below the value of what you pay for your repack, or you have a chance of really hitting it big and getting something larger in value than what you're paying in. Down here at a place on the Delaware Bay called Bennett's Pier, my uncle and my grandfather used to bring me down here a lot and we would drop gill nets. Here's a gill net that someone actually has soaking right now. And camp overnight and then check them in the morning to see what kind of fish we would catch. A lot of times I can find ospreys or even bald eagles down here. I've already seen two giant ospreys, but I wasn't able to get them on camera. And you can see back here over my left shoulder, that's a big nest out there in that field. And in that nest is also a giant osprey. Look at the bird poking up out of the nest. Most repackers will try to fill their repacks with quality cards, AKA hits. And even though your hit may not be worth the value or worth the amount that you're paying for the repack, they still try to make it that you get a nice item. So with that basic description of what a repack is and how they kind of work, I do think that repacks do have their place in the hobby. Give a chance for someone to buy a product, to get a decent card in that product, to get maybe a possibly a really good card in that product, at a cheaper price at what it would cost you to buy wax, and at least you're guaranteed to get something semi-decent, even if you're not getting your full value in return. It also helps some people satisfy that adrenaline rush that they would normally get from breaking cards. However, they're just breaking a repack, which you could relate to being just a pack of cards that's been strategically put together by a person or a company. Now, most of your repacks are going to have modern cards in them. Typically be the popular hits, like I said earlier, mem cards, autographs, Hall of Famers. I'm not sure if many repacks use modern rookie cards. There's going to be a mix of slabs and raw cards as well. And it's typically going to be some of your chase products, such as Flawless, NT, maybe some mid-level stuff like Spectra. But it's going to be cards that have patches and autographs on them. Typically, you don't see vintage repacks or repacks of cards from the 90s or the early 2000s. Decided to bring the Wrangler out for the first time this year. I could drive it out onto the sand over here, but I'm not going to because then I wouldn't be able to look at the scenery as much. And right now, anyone who has done any buying or selling in the hobby does realize that repackers are buying a lot of inventory. And I'm not gonna say that that's a bad thing because I would be a hypocrite if I did because I have sold to repackers myself. Does it create more competition? Does it make it tougher for every individual to go out to a show and buy high-end cards or decent quality cards at decent prices? Yes, it can because you may not have the opportunity to get to some inventory as quicker as the people who buy for the repackers tend to do. Again, I'm not going to say whether that's fair or not fair. This is a business. It's not going to do any good to cry about it. You're just going to have to try to up your game or myself going to have to try to up my game in order to get some cards that I want if I'm trying to dabble in the same type of cards that the repackers are currently purchasing. For myself right now, I'm not really affected by it because I'm buying older cards and inserts from the 90s and the 2000s. 1996 Bowman's Best Cuts Die Cut Atomic Refractor of Shaq. $200 purchase. However, the last PSA 10 did like 2800 and PSA 9s also sell really strong. So I'm hoping I can send this in and get a really good grade on it. These Atomic Refractors look really, really cool not really dabbling in a lot of modern cards. 
besides maybe two or three young quarterbacks that I'm buying raw to grade. This here is one of those super cool case hits out of plates and patches, one of the metal cards. Anthony Richardson Nuclear. One thing I do want to talk about is the possible effect of the money that's being pumped into the market by the repack companies and the people buying for the repackers. Now, in the casino business, we have a term that we like to call false drop. False drop is when someone will buy in on a table, they'll either break even or they'll win a little bit, they'll take their chips to the cage and get more cash, come back to the table and buy in again, as opposed to continue to sit there and play with the chips that they have in front of them. If you hear me use the term checks, that is the casino term for chips. I am not talking about a paper check. It creates this term that we use called false drop because that person now appears to be in more money than they actually are. So say they bought in for a hundred bucks, they took a hundred dollars in chips to the cage and they came back and they bought in for a hundred bucks. It is now going to appear that they are in for two hundred dollars worth of cash to the casino. However, it's only a hundred dollars of drop because they're not losing. They're just taking money to the cage in the form of checks, bringing it back in cash, and basically recycling the money. There's a very rare creature that likes to come down to these parts, and if we're very quiet, maybe we'll be able to spot one. Remember that term false drop, because I'm gonna use it again when I reference repackers later in the video. Here we go, we have spotted one. Right ahead, as it could turn on us and be vicious at any second. Back to the buying side for the repackers. We all know that they're paying very strong, some 90%, 95%. Some are even willing to pay over eBay comps in order to get a card to put into their product. That is because they know all they, that they have to do is sell enough repacks to cover the initial cost of their product. They know what percentage will be left over to guarantee them a margin once their repack products are sold, which means they can pay very strong for cards because they can charge what they want to charge for their repacks as long as the big hits outweigh the cost of the repack product itself. So if you think about the way that a blackjack game works in a casino, a blackjack table is typically going to have about six seats, which means it can hold up to six players at a time. Some hold seven and some hold eight. However, you're going to have some people that win and you're going to have some people that lose. If everyone at a blackjack table, say six people, is playing $10 a hand, you have $60 on the table. If two people win, they're going to get paid out $20 from the casino. At least so it appears. You're going to also have four losers. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Which is then going to lose $40. So in essence, 20 of that $40 is going to pay out the winners. And 20 of that $40 that loses is going to go into the rack. And it's going to be 100% profit for the casino. You got my 40, homie. So if you think about that along those terms you're actually paying the winners with the loser's money and anything that is left over, you are now making as 100% profit from a casino standpoint. The appearance is that the casino is paying out that money, but when you think about it and you watch it happen, you actually see that losers are paying the winners and the casino is getting whatever is left over. And that could be referred to as easy pickings. Carl Pickens, finest gold refractor. Fans that watch football in the 2000s, you guys remember Carl Pickens? You can relate the term easy pickings to the repackers and how they make their money and also relate the way that I told you that blackjack tables and games work. You're going to have some people that don't get the full value that they pay into the repack. You're going to get some people that do get over the value that they pay into the repack. You're going to have winners and you're going to have losers. And essentially, the winners are being paid with the loser's money. Anything that is left over then goes to the repack company as guaranteed profit. And what this does is that it allows the repackers to buy at very strong prices because essentially they're buying in risk-free. And when you have no risk and you're looking at guaranteed margins, you can pay more than the typical person that is going to be risking money when buying a card. Or even if that card is for the collection, people aren't typically going to want to overpay too much. I'm going to grab this big piece of driftwood. This will look like a nice decoration at my house. To acquire it. Now, one of the main questions I would like to know the answer to, and there's no way I'm ever really going to be able to find this out, is what percentage of people who get a card out of a repack actually keep their card? And I feel that this is very important because if the people aren't keeping their cards and they're actually reselling the cards back into the market, in some cases, maybe back to the same people that they acquired the card from, 
only to then be repacked once again, sold once again, then resold again by someone who pulls it out of a repacker in, into one big continuous cycle. It now brings me back to the term false drop because now you're looking at the card and the money being recycled multiple times as opposed to people keeping the card then bringing fresh income into the market to buy the repacks. So it can become one big cycle of the same cards and the same money being recycled over and over again. That's not right. How can the price be going down? And it'll never always be 100% the same cards and the same money because you will have new cards come in. You'll have new buyers come in. You'll have buyers leave. The thing is, is that a certain percent of it probably is. So it gives a false pretense that money is being pumped into the market for repacks, but it's not necessarily fresh money as much as it is just one big constant cycle, which then allows the sellers of the repackers to profit off the same card multiple times, which is kind of a little bit unhealthy. Got a Nick Bosa snakeskin here out of Prism. Just a cheap pickup of a collectible defensive player that I'll grade. Hopefully I'll get a 10 and be able to make a little bit of profit on this card. Especially when they're profiting each time, but the person who was acquiring the card in the repack is probably having to sell it less for what they got it for when they already took a value hit when they bought the product. And it could give that casino mentality of where people... They enjoy to gamble. They enjoy the chance at winning something big. But if it just never happens for them, they can tend to sour on it. Here in the 302, this is what we call the Delaware Wild Dingus. Now, do I think that's going to happen with repacks anytime soon? I absolutely do not. I actually believe that in most cases, a repacker that is trustworthy, and that's a big thing. You're going to have to find a repacker that you trust and actually puts good hits in their product. You're not going to want to go out and buy a repacker that's a scam because there is scams in everything in this world, not just this hobby. In fact, we had a YouTube content creator who sold a shitty repack to his loyal viewers and got called out on it. Talk about a gamble. That's what we call dirty money. I've been getting dirty money, Jordan Bell. Some of the bigger repackers are gonna be the ones that are gonna have a good reputation, that are gonna offer you a decent product, at least anything better than Topps or Panini is probably offering right now for your money. And honestly, right now, I don't see those companies going anywhere or those repackers being faded out due to the fact that the manufacturers aren't giving you anything to buy worth your money, even close to what a repacker that you can trust is offering. Again, in that aspect, if a repacker is truly offering a good product, it can't be bad for the hobby. If they're buying up inventory, yes, it creates competition, but we have always said that competition within the hobby is good. Now, it may affect some people worse than it affects others, but it's just the way that business operates. But the one thing that could be worrisome, at least to me and my thoughts, is the fact that a lot of the same money is being recycled through these repacks and what happens if a lot of this money is withdrawn. It could be a good thing because now it could make cards a lot more affordable for the collectors to buy Hall of Fame autos and modern products and such. But also as someone who sells cards and is always looking for a safe outlet to dump inventory, it could take away from what you could make because selling to repackers right now is getting you top dollar. Daisy, we got this puppy safe ink pad. What could we use this for? That's just some random thoughts that run through my head when I think about the way that the repacker system is working right now. And I could, could be completely off. You guys give me some comments below. I'm going to wrap this video and keep it short. I apologize for not having as much content out lately. This physical therapy is taking up a lot of my time. Time that I would typically normally use to film videos. Now between my family and my job and buying and selling cards. And now with this physical therapy cutting into my day, it's been tough for me to put out videos. Make sure you guys are keeping your eyes peeled for the upcoming content. We are working towards the national giveaway. It's getting closer and closer. I also have some downtown stickers coming in. I'm not sure how I'm gonna distribute those, but you guys may be interested in those when they get here and you'll see them when I finally get them. All right guys, thanks for viewing. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one. And the Delaware Wild Dingus is about to attack the Driftwood.